Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you how to make your very own DIY tallow facial moisturizer using just a few simple ingredients. I'm Kelsey from roughandtumblefarmhouse.com where every single week I share stories about farming, family food, and fortitude here on our five acre homestead in northern Minnesota. So we're going to cover a lot of bases here with this tallow face cream. If you already know about tallow, don't really want any additional information, I'll put a little note here at what time marker to skip ahead to go ahead and make your own tallow face cream. But there are some things I want to cover here, including essential oil safety, different sorts of oils are going to be mixing in with the tallow, that sort of stuff. So you probably want to stick around just so you get that information. So first of all, what is tallow? Tallow is an animal fat that comes from ruminants, so from sheep, goats, cows. I'm going to be using specifically grass-fed beef tallow for this recipe today. It's different than lard, which comes from pigs, and lard definitely has more of a different chemical makeup to it. It's not going to be as quite as good for like just like a, a direct face cream like this. Lard is great for soap making, but it's not something that I necessarily want to be rubbing directly onto my skin without it kind of going through another process first. But tallow, on the other hand, you certainly can put on your face, on your hands, kind of more directly on your skin. So we have tallow from a combination of places. We processed our own steer, I think maybe almost two years ago now, and I'm still working through some of that tallow in the freezer. I also rendered some tallow down. We bought a half a beef from a neighboring farmer last year because we had a heifer born and not a steer. So we either get a new milk cow or we get beef win-win <laughs> either way. So we did have to buy some beef from a friend. But if you don't have tallow, I would suggest, first of all, checking at your local farmer's market, see if there is a grass-fed beef vendor there that you can get some either just tallow from, or if you buy a quarter beef or something like that, you can ask that the tallow comes with, that the fat comes back to you. It, for the most part, is going to come back just in big kind of leaves of fat with like sinew kind of stuff still attached to it, and you'll have to process that down. Uh, and you can ask as well if you are getting tallow back from a processor, if they can run it through their meat grinder for you, I'd absolutely ask for that because then it's going to process down a lot faster if you have to go through the rendering process. So rendering is the process of taking it from kind of that raw meat type thing and you melt it down. There's a couple different ways you can do that to get it to like a clean, not beefy smelling product that we're going to be using today. If you're interested in learning how to do that, I do have a video about how to render tallow as well. I will link to that below in the description box. So one thing I really want to cover is why we are using tallow. Is tallow good for your skin? And this is something where I'm absolutely not going to blow smoke. It's, it's one of my the things that I really take a lot of time and effort as I try and make sure I'm never sharing with you guys things where it's just, oh, drink this, this elixir syrup or put this magical beef fat on your skin. It's going to solve all your problems because... I like to make sure that things are research based, that it's not just, I put a lot of weight and trust and I do try just kind of like folk remedies, but I a lot of times want to make sure, like I said, I'm not blowing smoke, that I'm giving you actual like science based information on things. So tallow, unfortunately there is not a lot out there in terms of resources that tell you exactly why it is so good for your skin. So we do know it has some certain fatty acids in it that can be really good for your skin, lots of triglycerides, and there's a lot of different, uh, like the chemical makeup of it is really similar to a lot of things we do use in other sort of skincare for sure. And I've got more information about that in the blog post. You can click the link below in the description box to find out more. But uh, there's kind of mixed things in terms of whether it's, it's the ideal thing to be putting on your skin or not. I've had good success with it. I know a lot of people that have had good success with it, but I do want to give you just kind of a little bit of some of the caveats. So for example, when I'm trying to find out more information about the makeup of tallow, there's really only two articles I can find that come from even somewhat legitimate resources and both of them quote different dermatologists that kind of have their hesitations about tallow. For one, one of them says the, um, oh gosh, I'm never going to pronounce this right. It's, hold on, let me look it up. Okay, I'm back. Comedogenic is the word. It's one where I know it when I see it, but pronouncing it, I just kind of glaze over. Comedogenic, which means pore clogging, and different oils have a rating between a zero and a five as to how much they're going to kind of clog up your pores. Five being the worst, zero being the best. And so one source that I saw says that tallow has a rating of zero, that it's fabulous. And then some dermatologists that I was reading in this article, they said that it has a rating of three, which is a little on the higher end of things. Another potential negative of tallow is it does have higher amounts of oleic acid, which is something that is also in olive oil. So olive oil typically isn't great for face stuff because it tends to be a little more 
irritating if you have acne prone skin. So, but then it does have other components and elements to it different than say olive oil that might kind of combat that. So it's, it's a frustrating thing where I'm trying to find, you know, good solid sources where I can say, yes, this is great because of X, Y, Z. It doesn't really exist. The places that are talking the most about tallow in terms of my research are just other bloggers and people who sell tallow products. So it's not that I don't trust these people, but it's like they have, you know, they have a horse in this race. They're trying to sell you tallow already, or they're trying to get you to make their tallow face cream like I'm pitching you today. So I, I just want to make sure that, that I caution that while tallow has worked great for a lot of people, it works great for me with any sort of skincare product, make sure you are testing a small amount first. I would not recommend you go out and get a huge amount of tallow <laughs> and planning on making like all this crazy tallow face cream because maybe it's not going to work well with your skin. So just be cautious. See if you can find, you know, another friend or something who works with tallow or maybe spend that little bit of extra cash to buy already rendered tallow in like a little pot or something and experiment with it there because it might not be for your personal skin type and body. It might not be kind of the wonder cure all moisturizer that a lot of people say it is. So again, in this recipe, we are going to be combining rendered tallow with another liquid oil. And so there are a ton of different types of liquid oils that you can use for this recipe. I'm gonna recommend just three or four. So in general, sweet almond oil is a really good all-purpose oil that's kind of good for all skin types. It has the comedogenic, I think I pronounced it right, it has a really low score with that. So it's a good one for using on your face. So sweet almond oil is a really good option. If you maybe have nut allergies, another good choice is apricot kernel oil is another one that's kind of a just good general for all sort of skin types. That one might work well for you. Uh, another option is grapeseed oil is another good choice for your face. And then the two kind of like queens of facial oils are jojoba, the J-O-J-O-B-A, jojoba is how it's pronounced, jojoba oil, and then also argan oil. Those are all some really good options for this. I would stay away from olive oil, coconut oil, any oil that's kind of like a thicker sort of oil, you don't want to use that on your face. And please make sure you are using, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, like pharmaceutical grade, made for skincare oils. Don't use stuff that you buy in like the cooking section necessarily because it hasn't been rated and processed to where you're wanting to use it for skincare. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about in terms of ingredients is essential oils. So it is completely optional to add essential oils to this, whether you want to or not. Honestly, it's optional to even add the liquid oil. If you just want to take some rendered tallow and rub that on your face, go for it. <laughs> or rub it on some dry spots you might have. You can absolutely render it down, whip it up, and still use it just straight up tallow. But if you would like to add some essential oils, essential oils can definitely have some benefits for our skincare. This is another one where, again, I feel like it's one of the bones I have to pick with my fellow, not all, but some of my fellow uh, kind of crunchy homesteader types that people are just kind of, yeah, throw 28 drops of essential oils and blend this and that and put it on your face, it's gonna be great. Well, there's safety you wanna be aware of with essential oils uh, for making especially a topical application for your face. It is recommended that you have no more than 1% of your total mixture be essential oils. So when it comes to adding essential oils to a recipe like this, versus going on drops, you should really be going on weight. The recipe I'm sharing with you today calls for 102 grams of tallow. It calls for 20 grams of a liquid oil and then just 1.5 grams of essential oil. So that's not very much. It's actually, I've had kind of a hard time getting my scale to even measure just a single gram. Because <laughs> my goal was to, to put drops in until I hit one gram, count how many it was, and then add half that many again, just because it doesn't do 1.5 grams. Maybe you have a very, very specific scale that'll do that. Mine does not. But essential oils do not all weigh the same. So to say to put, you know, 30 drops of eucalyptus oil in and then 30 drops of rosehip oil, they might not weigh the same amount. And if they don't weigh the same amount, you aren't actually getting that percentage right for, for the dilution rate you should be using for an essential oil, especially on your face. So one thing that's nice about that dilution rate is it is safe for pregnant and nursing people. Though please, whatever essential oil you're going to use, make sure you check and make sure there aren't any contraindications or negative side effects that it might cause for someone who is pregnant, who is nursing, that sort of thing. I'm still pregnant. I'm actually uh, nine months pregnant <laughs> in just like a couple days here. And so that's a nice thing is that knowing 1% is also the recommended dilution rate for a pregnant person. So you can feel safe using this face cream as long as it's an oil that is safe for pregnant people. So if you go to the blog post, I have a list of essential oils that are for the most part considered safe for using on your face. So things like um, tea tree, patchouli, cedar, 
uh, rose is a really popular good one eucalyptus so just check out that full list over on the blog I also have a list of ones you want to avoid right off the top of my head you definitely want to avoid any sort of citrus oils because those um, can negatively negatively react with the Sun and can actually cause your skin to burn so please do not use citrus oils for sure on your face even though they smell lovely okay so I think I've been through all the side information I think I have covered all the cautionary things about making this face cream if you have made it this far and you still want to make face cream that's fabulous I just like I said I really like to make sure that I am honest and what I'm sharing with people uh, and as helpful as possible because I hate for you to make this and put it all over your face and have a huge like acne breakout or react negatively to an essential oil so it's important that we know what we're doing when we make this stuff it's fun to play around with it but we have to be responsible so to get started with this you are going to need like I mentioned 102 grams which is approximately about a half of cup of rendered tallow so you're gonna start with that and you want to melt it down you can use a double boiler if you want to or just pop it in your microwave do it for maybe 15 to 20 second increment stirring in between just to get it just to the point of being liquid to that we are going to add 20 grams of a liquid oil and for me I chose to use because I'm trying to use up I had just the right amount of argan oil to use this and so for me 20 grams was just a little over two tablespoons so kind of a really full two tablespoons and then to that you're going to add again that 1.5 grams of essential oil for me I was using a, a rose kind of a rose blend for this and that ended up being I believe about 28 drops but again measure your oils please your essential oils lastly I really recommend though again it's optional putting in about four drops of vitamin E oil vitamin E is a great conditioning sort of oil for skin it also acts uh, as kind of a little bit of a preservative it's not like technically a preservative but vitamin E oil does help to keep your other oils from going rancid longer so add all these ingredients to your liquid tallow and go ahead and whisk it up really really well you don't have to use a hand mixer for this point for this part but you can and then after that we're going to stick it in the fridge for just a few minutes and we want that oil to start to solidify so you want to just kind of keep checking it it depends on how cold your fridge is how fast this is going to happen you don't want it to get totally solid you want it to just start to get a little bit firm and after that you're going to pull it out of the fridge use your hand mixer and we are going to whip it up to make a beautiful whipped facial tallow cream now if you don't really care about that whipped consistency i personally like it it feels just a little bit lush if you don't care about that you can just go straight from mixing all your oils together to pouring it into your storage container i like to keep this recipe pretty small this will yield you a little under one cup of tallow face cream especially once you've whipped it up if you don't whip it it'll take up a little less space the shelf light the shelf life on it is a couple of months and i find that if it's any longer than that then i risk kind of the oil starting to turn a little funky on me and the scent just isn't as good so you can just keep this on your shelf it is absolutely shelf stable just keep it in your bathroom ready to go if you'd like to prolong the life of it you can keep it in your fridge and it'll last a lot longer that way too so if you have any questions at all about how to make your own tallow face cream please comment below i am very happy to answer any questions make sure again you head on over to the blog post i cover things way more in depth over there this video is already a lot longer than i intended it to be but hopefully we covered all of our bases and you have a beautiful whipped tallow face cream to use thanks so much for watching we'll see you next week for more farming family food and fortitude here at our rough and tumble farmhouse